Hey guys, so I had decided I was going to do a get ready with me video today and a lot of times I like to do some of the first steps off camera because otherwise the video will be ridiculously long. So for whatever reason I just decided to put my foundation on today with my beauty blender and the um, foundation that I used is the NARS all day weight all day luminous weightless foundation and they don't recommend that you use anything other than your fingers with this and just for the heck of it over this past weekend I tried putting it on with a brush and I didn't really like the end result the the finish it, it looked different and not in a good way so for whatever reason today I decided to use a beauty blender and I like it. I think it looks, uh, I kind of like the finish of it by using the Beauty Blender. I know that some of you have purchased this foundation recently, so have you tried experimenting with applying it different ways and what were your results? I'm just curious. So, so far I like putting it on with my fingers and I like using the Beauty Blender. I think one of the reasons why they probably don't recommend that you use a brush or a beauty blender is that you'll use too much and another thing is with the beauty blender it's a sponge and that foundation is really liquidy so I think you know you probably waste a lot by using the beauty blender but I don't think they would really care about that because the more you waste the more foundation you have to buy the more money that they can make right <laughs> So anyways, um, yeah, let me just run through the products that I've already applied. I've already applied my EOS lip balm, the foundation, like I said, and then I used Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser Dark Circles in the shade Neutralizer. And you may have noticed that I've been using a really wide variety of concealers lately. That's just because I have a lot of concealers and... I like to see if I can see any subtle differences between each one, so that's what I have on today. And then I set that with the Wet n Wild Fergie Mattifying Powder and Pedestal. This is a very lightweight um, powder that's really good for setting concealer. It wouldn't really do much if you put it over foundation other than mattify your foundation, which I don't necessarily want to do. But, um, yeah, so I just use this to set just that um, under eye concealer. And then the only other thing I did was I did do my brows. And today I used my e.l.f. eyebrow kit in Ash. And that's another thing that you'll see all different products listed a lot of times in the description box. Because I switch up doing my brows because I keep trying to decide which products that I like better. It also depends on what I'm using for makeup too. Sometimes I'll use different things on my brows depending on what I'm using for eyeshadows and lip products and so forth. All right, so let's take it from there. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use this NYX HD Blush in Taupe and I'm going to contour my face with it. It's just this really cool toned taupe color and I'm going to use going to use this Real Techniques brush. It's number 501. This is their sculpting brush from the Bold Metals collection. And I happened to notice that uh, when I was on the Ulta website earlier today that all the Bold Metals collection brushes by Real Techniques are 20% off right now. So I was looking and looking and I was like, are there any brushes left that I haven't gotten that I really, really want? But, you know, I think I'm pretty happy with the ones that I have, so I think I will stick to those. All right, so let's put some product on this. I'm just pressing, like, the edge of the brush into the blush because I don't want to pick up too much. And I'm just going to go right there on my contour. We've been getting some spectacular weather here in New England. It's been unseasonably warm. I've been wearing shorts every day. It's just wonderful. I don't know if it's going to last, but I'm enjoying it while I can. 
I hadn't even had my air conditioner serviced yet. Every year I have this company come out and check it over and make sure everything's okay to get it kind of ready for the summer. And uh, the, the summer weather is here before I've even had that done, so I made an appointment, but he won't be coming out till probably next week sometime. Okay, so that's done. And then next I'm going to use that Maybelline Dream Bouncy Blush that I picked up the other day in the shade Rose Petal, which, you know, roses come in all different colors, so one person's idea of rose may not be somebody else's, but this is actually um, kind of a warm rose, I would say. And then I'm going to use my Real Techniques brush in number 300 and this is also from the Bold Metals collection. I don't know if this brush is going to work good with this or not. I think I used it the other day but I'm just kind of patting that rather than pressing it and then just sort of lightly dusting that on my face and I'm going right into that contour as well a little bit. I've been skipping the highlighter again just because I don't know, I don't feel like I'm really wild about any of my face highlighters. I want to get some new ones, but the new ones that I want to get are very expensive, so I've just been skipping it all together, which doesn't make sense because I have things that I could use, but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> just in case anybody notices that I'm not going to use a highlighter today. Now I'm going to use bronzer. I've been using the NARS Laguna bronzer and that's been working out pretty good for me, which is strange because if you look at this color, you wouldn't think that that would work with my skin tone, but it does. I'm going to use a Zoeva buffing brush, which is number 104. And I like to start at the top of my hairline just go right around the perimeter of my face then I like to go down my neck dust a little bit on my ears so they don't look crazy white in comparison <laughs> and then I just go like right on my shoulder right on my shoulders, my collarbone and down along the edge of my shirt neckline just kind of blend it all so that it's a gradual thing then at the end I usually go back over that sculpting area and just blend a little bit of the bronzer right into the face contour. Okay. Now, let's get to work on the eyes. I'm going to start with Bobbi Brown Long Wear Cream Shadow in Bone, and this is just a beige cream eyeshadow. And I'm going to use, let's use a brush today. I usually use my finger, but this is a MAC. The number's worn off, and I don't know them by heart brush. <laughs> it's the shader brush that you're supposed to use with cream products. So I'm sure a lot of you know which one that is. And the way you can tell, by the way, is it has like golden tan colored bristles. And then for powder products, you would use the one with the white bristles. 
So that's why they have two shader brushes with two different colored bristles. Now I did put a little bit of foundation in the eye area also when I did my foundation. I kind of want to get into the habit of doing that just in case I don't want to use some sort of a cream base. That way I could just go right in with the powder eyeshadow if I wanted to. I like to play around with that and see, you know, how things perform with and without extra layers. I'm always so paranoid though about having veining and discoloration in that area, so I usually will take that extra step and, um, you know, put the cream product on. Sometimes I like to just do it on the lids and then a little bit into the crease. Now I noticed that when you put this on, it has a tendency to sort of um, clump up and concentrate right in that area right there. So I think I'm going to take a brush. Actually, I'm going to grab the brush that I used to blend out my concealer. This is the e.l.f. Flawless Concealer Brush from the Studio line. And I think I'm going to just use that to buff out that excess material that tends to coagulate a little bit right in that inner eye area there because I don't want a concentration of color there because it's gonna you know it's gonna stand out and be noticeable okay next I'm going to use a let's see I want to make sure I grab the right one here this is a Zoeva crease brush and then I'm going to use something I haven't used in a long long time. I'm going to use a Milani Bella eyeshadow and this this is the Bella Eyes Gel Powder Eyeshadow in Bella Cappuccino number three. Remember when these came out? I went crazy and I bought all of them. I do love them but I have so many eyeshadows that sometimes I things get pushed aside and then I kind of forget about them. Well I came across a picture of one of these online today and I was like, oh my god, the Milani eyeshadows. So we're going to put Bella Cappuccino in the outer crease area with this Zoeva crease brush. Sounds like one of my neighbors is right outside there. Alright, so I'm just going to put this right like from the midpoint and work it outward in the crease. Put some more on. Okay, and next I'm going to take a different brush. This is a Real Techniques Base Shadow Brush, but even though it's called a base shadow brush, I love it in the crease. And this is a slightly smaller brush than that Zoeva one is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Urban Decay Faint from the Naked Basics palette, which looks like that. And I'm going to put a little bit of that on this Real Techniques brush. And I'm also going to go into the outer crease. Now you're probably thinking, why, why would you layer two crease colors on top of each other? Because it's going to give it um, more complexity, more dimension. And I'm not going to, because I'm using a smaller brush, I'm going to go more like defined into the actual crease rather than in the crease and above. Hopefully that made sense. 
Okay, so I'm just putting a tiny little bit of this on because this is a much more pigmented, darker shade than the other one I used. And I'm going to go right in the actual crease area. Just like that. So see, you can still see the other color peeking out from under it. I wouldn't say that I used the first one as a transition though because if it was a transition I would have gone up higher. This is really pigmented so I hope I didn't put too much on my brush. Because I don't, if I start blending it out with another brush, then I'm going to lose that other color. Sometimes if, if you're working with a really uh, pigmented color like that, what you can do is just try to like dust off any excess color onto your hand. That way you're not adding any more if you feel like you have the right amount on there. You're just blending it. Okay, next I'm going to take Makeup Geek Shimmer Shimmer and I'm going to use that other MAC shader brush which is a 239. I do, the know, I do know the number of that one. <laughs> and I'm going to put that on the lids. Then I'm going to take MAC All That Glitters and I'm going to use, let's see, what brush should I use for that? Let's use uh, Real Techniques, no, let's not. <laughs> um, yeah, let's use this. Let's use this Rite Aid Flat Shader Brush, not shader, um, liner brush. And I'm going to put All That Glitters right on the lower lash line camera just shut off so see that's why I have to eliminate the um, products at the beginning because I think it's way more fun to watch somebody do the eye makeup and the lips than it is to do the face makeup but I try to incorporate some of the face makeup into it too, you know, the blush and bronzer and contour and stuff. But yeah, nobody wants to see you put on foundation or do your eyebrows or anything like that. Okay, so I've got some All That Glitters along the lower lash line. Now I'm going to take ColourPop Fringe and do the inner corner highlight with this Real Techniques accent brush. So I used all different eyeshadows and every single one was a different brand. I don't know, I just thought that would be <laughs> fun to do. Plus, you know, it just so happens that the colors that I had in mind to do this look 
I had, you know, things from all different brands. So I'm just doing the inner corners with the fringe. Now in terms of color, I didn't really give you any color descriptions, but just briefly, the Milani Bella Cappuccino, I would say, is a light brown. The Urban Decay uh, Faint is a darker brown. The Shimmer Shimmer is a beige by Makeup Geek. All That Glitters by MAC is a peach. And the ColourPop fringe is a gold. And I like, I just wanted to run down the colors because, um, you know, in case you wanted to duplicate the look with things that you had, then you wouldn't have to try to figure out what colors I used. So, okay. Um, I'm going to shut the camera off to do the mascara because, you know, that's kind of boring watching somebody put on mascara. Going to use Too Faced Better Than Sex. Mascara on the top lashes and Wet n Wild Max Volume Plus Mascara on the bottom lashes and then I'll be back to do the lips. Gotta tell you, I really, really like this combination and I haven't used it before. Um, yay! <laughs> I love it when things come out the way I envision them to in my mind. Okay, on my lips, I'm going to use a lip liner that's discontinued. Um, they do, they have replaced it with something similar though. This is Essence Lip Liner in number one Soft Rose. Uh, I was on the Ulta website this morning, like I mentioned, and I saw that they don't have this anymore, but they do have another one called Something Something Rose, so I guess that's the replacement for this. But this is, um, this is a nice color. And I haven't seen the new one in person yet, so it might even be better than this. Just another example of what I was talking about yesterday about companies always switching things up and changing things. So I'm just lining my lips and filling them in with this soft rose shade. And then for a lipstick, I'm going to use something that I haven't used in quite a while, and I loved it so much when I first bought it, but, you know, it's just one of those things that you keep getting new stuff and you forget about the other stuff that you bought. This is the Wet n Wild Silk Finish Lipstick in 503C. It's called Will You Be With Me? Wet n Wild reformulated their silk finish lipstick line and they added a couple new shades and this was one of them. So it's just a really pretty rosy pink color. I can't even remember the last time I wore pink lipstick. So I'm mixing tones here, folks. I've got cool pink lips with warm, neutral eyes, and I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about that. So that is it. That's the completed look, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye! I was like, something about this look doesn't look right and I figured out I didn't put any eyeliner on so I just added some Maybelline Master Kajal Cream Coal Eyeliner in Midnight Brown and now it looks done. I did the tight line and then I just put a little bit along the lower lash line right on top of that MAC All It Glitters and yeah now it looks done. I knew something was missing so sorry about that. Now it's bye for real. <laughs>